Ladies and gentlemen, you know my first guest tonight as Kate from the hit show This Is Us. She's also written a new book called This Is Me. Please welcome Chrissy Metz. To be here. What do you say? I feel very fancy to be here. Well, you 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 are a fancy person. You're the you're a big star of a hit TV show. What could be fancier? I, I, I don't know. I'm very grateful. But you weren't all you weren't always uh, as fancy as you are now. You used no. to work. I understand that your start in show business was helping other people turn into fancy people because you were a you were an agent. I was a talent agent. Yeah. For like nine years. But that's a long time to uh -huh. be in the trenches. Uh huh. How do you how do you get somebody a job? Because I've 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 had agents. I've had the same agent for over 20 years. As far as I can tell, it involves a lot of smoking and saying, "Listen, baby." So listen, baby. So yes. So how did what did, who are you working with? Where was this? So I worked at um, two pretty big firms in Los Angeles, and yeah. I was a theatrical agent well, for can kids. You name, can you name? Them? Oh yeah, Buckwald and Abrams. Okay, sure. Um, which were great places to really learn a lot. Yeah. But I was like, I am not an agent. Because, like, I, for me, it's like you get a lot of bees with honey and not vinegar, and sometimes they, they expect you to have the vinegar. And I was like, I can't be sassy and bratty and mean and, like, aggressive. And not to say that... Who are you always... supposed to be sassy and bratty and mean to? Because, you know, you got to get aggressive. Like, really, you're not going to give them this? Well, this guy, you know... Oh, when you're negotiating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I thought maybe your clients. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you're never going to work. You're never going to yeah. work. You're ugly yeah, and you're not talented. terrible. Click. I don't know why I represent you. Yes. No, no. I, that's the thing is I always represented the underdog, like the people yeah. who weren't going to make you know, money overnight. Yeah. But I believed in their talents and their abilities. And so yeah. I had to get really clever and creative. Um, one of my dear friends who is an incredible writer and actor, um, his name's Evan Cooper, I'm always like, he's the Jim Carrey. He's like the love child of Jim Carrey and Edward Norton. And they're like, wow. Okay, on, we'll see him. That the love child of Jim Carrey <laughs> and Edward. What a Morton. range! What a oh, range! Oh, sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like you would be Gary Oldman and like Bob Saget, right? <laughs> right. I like it. Sure. Right? You got an edge. You got some funny. You're handsome. Wow. Right. right. Wow. So, yeah. You could see me raising an adorable girl with two other guys. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But also being Dracula on the sly. Right. Um, right. so did you work, did you, I hear you worked with kids. Did I did. You, was it hard to represent children? Um, you know, it's not that it's hard to represent the children. It's yes. really the momagers, right? As, as, as people call them. Oh, it's not managers, they're momagers. Right. Okay. And like, God bless them. They really want their kids to do well, but how, sure. sometimes they live vicariously through the children. Yeah. And this one little boy, oh my gosh, he comes in and he's like, uh, I don't really want to be an actor. I don't want to audition, but my mom said, if I do, I get a toy from Target. And I'm like, okay. Okay, okay. So do you want to just do the monologue? And he's like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, and then we can tell your mom you did it and you did a great job and you get a toy. He's like, okay. And so, yeah, I just felt like, I, you know, I don't want it to be a traumatic experience. And so, so, you and know. That young boy is Joseph Gordon Levitt now. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. You're welcome, Jordan. Unbe yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Little boy well, Jordan, um, yeah. you were also, you have, you're a bit of a glutton for punishment because not only did you work with kids, you were a preschool teacher. And God bless you for, for teaching the children. <laughs> what was that? How, do you, how does one be a good preschool teacher? Well, I think you have to be very patient. Sure. Very patient. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Is kids... there any crossover between being an actor or being in show business? Yes, you have to be and... very patient. Oh, okay. Right. You have to be very yes. patient. And uh, we use props at circle time, like, to keep the interest, just as circle an actor time. would. I'm sorry? Circle it's time. It's been a while since I was oh. in preschool. Oh, has it? Okay. Yeah. It looks circle so young. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, you sort of welcome the kids in in the morning and you read oh, the sure, story sure, sure. and sort of just. They're on the floor, on right. little They're bits of rug. Circle time. Sure, yeah. Right. The Actually, circle. Oh, circle time. Right. Right. And so you read. <laughs> So you read the book, and it just sort of helps, like, the, the separation between the parent and the kid and, like, okay. you know, the sort of distraction. But, sure. um, you know, kids say the, the darndest things. And there's they one do. little boy who always used to sit next to me, and one day he was, like, new. And I was like, oh, come sit next, you know. like, And so he, like, touched my leg, and he was like, Miss Chrissy, you need to shave. <laughs> I was like, I, have, I don't have time for shaving. I'm teaching kids things <laughs> and being all the farm animals in the farm. I was so mortified. Like, no, like, what? Wait, you're being all the farm animals on oh, the yeah, farm? You know, like, Did you do impressions? She, she, I mean, well, you know, you read it. You have to engage mm -hmm. the kids. They're yeah. three and five and six Can years old. Can I ask old. you something? What does the cow say? <laughs> 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 right. So good. Yeah, 
so the You're kids so just, just yeah. the best. They're just the best. So I understand you had props. Like, you thought props were a, a, an important thing. Sure. For... Like, you can have puppets. You can have props. Um, That's like show business, too? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Although, one of my, um, the teachers that we, you know, we co-taught together, mm -hmm. to kind of scare the kids to clean up, she brought this, um, well, she lived in the country, and so she bought this, like, old jawbone of, like, some animal that, I think, died on her property. And then she... But recognizable as a jawbone, like teeth and You that saw kind of teeth, stuff. you saw the jaw. Very, okay. very clear. This, this is part of a dead animal. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then she wrapped it with horse hair, and then she put a rubber band through it, so she would, like... She's like, oh, you don't want to clean up? This is what's under your bed, or this is what's going to be. And like, the kids loved it. The kids absolutely loved it because they, they were like, this is it, crazy. Huh? They loved it. Huh? <laughs> that no. sounds like testimony from the McMartin trial. It... That is truly dark. Are you running a cult? No. Sounds like it, but. Uh, a little no. bit. A little bit. No, no. She was a lovely, amazing teacher, and she was so much fun, but yeah. Well, now you've, you've just. You've just... Kick this acting thing to the curb, and you've jumped on the future bus of books right here. Oh. Because you have uh, your first book. It is the number one New York Times bestseller, debuting at number one. Thank you. Called this is me. Oh. Unreal. 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 On the book right there, tour. straight to the top, number one with a bullet. So, well, you talking this about uh, showing up for yourself? Yeah. What does that mean? What does that? What are you trying to say when you say show up I, for yourself? You know, for me, as far as acting goes, I'm sort of like a late bloomer. You know, everybody on the show has, like, lists of credits, and I'm like, right. I've done, like, co-star and guest star stuff. And sometimes it's, I'm like, am I good enough to be on this show? And, like, everybody is so exceptional. So sometimes it's literally like, Chrissy, just get in the car. Okay, now put the clothes on that they tell you to put on. And just read the lines and prepare, and then just show up for yourself, because you just have to get through it sometimes. Oh, show up for yourself and like, do the work. Just do the work. Wow. And it's hard, because we're not really taught that, and, and we kind of get in our heads, and I'm like, let me just do the job that I've been mm -hmm. told to do. Did you say that to the kids when you were an agent? Yes! No. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, when I was an agent, I was sort of, uh, I understood, because it was sort of like watching your boyfriend take another woman out every night, right? When you're like, have fun in your audition. But then I realized that we're here to be of service, and if I could be of service to people doing what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. then I'm sort of like, you know, putting that, that little investment away in myself as well. So um, it, was, it was honestly a gift. I mean... A, a long, very long gift, but sure. Gift. Well, <laughs> this, this, I've, uh, I've worked on a few books. Um, it's, it's a, it's an all. It can be an all-consuming and exhausting process. How long mm. did this take you to do? Four months. Four months. While you were, while you were working on this. Second is us? season and during award season, which was really tricky. Um, yeah, uh, but why, Kevin. Why is award season even trickier? Well, I, it's just because you you go to so many different events, and then you're right. also preparing for the show, and right. then you also call your ghostwriter, and you're like, I don't think you even want to hear about the story that I want to tell you because I don't even know if I can tell you about the story anymore. And you know, you're emotional. There's just highs and lows. You know, you have a ghostwriter. Yes, Kevin O'Leary, who okay. was exceptional. He became, you know, he was my ghostwriter, became my friend, my therapist, and then my friend. Yeah. Essentially, um, and it was so instrumental in the process. That is so nice of you to give credit to your ghostwriter. Oh, Most best. people don't give credit to their ghostwriters. It's your story. You've told them, but yeah. that's so nice. You're a very nice person. Oh, wow. Well. You should teach preschool. They okay. need nice people like you. <laughs> now, on the show, on the show, your character sings, and, and, and you also sing, um, uh, how do you sing on camera? Like, how do you sing in, in, in front of people? Because I like to sing sometimes, yeah. but I gotta tell you, it's one of the things that makes me most, most nervous is singing in oh, front of other people. It's, it, music's my first love. And so, like, it's one of the scariest things because I feel super vulnerable. It's sort of like stand-up comedy. Like, you're really bearing your soul and it's just like a microphone. At least with music, you have a band behind you. But thank God Kate is sort of in the process of sort of finding her footing as a singer. So mm -hmm. if I don't hit the right note, I'm like, oh, great. It's just Kate. You know, she's just, she's in the process. So I sort of lean on that. And, you know, you use the nerves and everything. But it is very nerve-wracking. Also, you have to do it in front of not just, you know, and people are just staring at you. Like, they're not going to clap because not necessarily clapping on camera, right? Sure, sure, exactly. And then you're like, oh, God, this is awkward. Like, are you even... Mm -hmm. Like, the first um, season when we did the um, Time After Time, yeah. we were in an old folks' home. Yeah. Now, I don't know if these extras, these background artists, were actually sleeping or told to sleep. <laughs> but they were not interested in what I was singing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to use this and probably pee my pants. And so it was very nerve-wracking. Do you have so. any tricks to calm you down to get you through 
Um, really, I just kind of breathe, sort of mm -hmm. plant myself. In. Breathing is good, I find. Breathing, yeah. in general, Always very helpful. good. Always helpful. You can apply that to almost anything. But I mean, like, sort of like a conscious, you know, breathing of sort of grounding yourself. And mm -hmm. also knowing that, like, if I hit the wrong note, uh, who cares? And really, it's about the story that I'm telling. And if I'm having a good time and yep. if I'm enjoying the process, the audience will as well. Well, you're, you're the, the, the last member of the family from This Is Us I to be what. here. And what we've, I, I've, I've been trying to collect all of you. And I love that. I've finally done it. And this is, we actually got this. This is your phone. This is my phone. You got out of your dressing room. Yeah. Would you mind if we took a, a, a selfie and we, we sent it out? And <gasps> yes. Said, like, On our we, text we chain? did it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, finally. Okay. They're going to be like, thank God. Yep. Yeah. OK, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh, wait, let me turn the camera around. OK, perfect. Dun, 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 dun! We did it. Yay! This Is Me is available now, and This Is Us returns this fall. Chrissy Metz, everybody. We'll be right back with Lewis Black.